Recently, I attended a law enforcement uh, luncheon awards, awards luncheon, and during the presentation, the acronym WIN, W-I-N, was displayed, meaning what's important now. I was totally intrigued by this acronym and what it meant not only to me, but the church as a whole. I couldn't get it off my mind. So let's go to our, our, our first slide. So the title of my message is, and is not displaying, uh, WIN. I don't know why it's not up there, but what's important now? So WIN is before those dots, and what's important now is underneath the line. So just picture that mentally. <laughs> So I did some research on where this acronym originated from and discovered that Lou Holtz, football coach of Notre Dame, said it. He instructed, he didn't ask, he didn't say pretty please, he instructed his team, the entire team, to ask themselves the question, what's important now at least 35 times a day? He felt that when setting a goal, that it was just important to ask yourself, what's important now to make that goal become a reality? He wanted his team to think about it when they woke up, while they were in class, study hall, the weight room, the practice field, standing on the sidelines during a game and while playing a game out on the field. Coach Holtz wanted his players to be able to learn to focus on what mattered at any given time. So, there's, so there is something to this acronym. We make decisions each and every day, and we need to ask ourselves, what's important now? What should be our focus for that moment? I also learned that Lou Holtz is a firm believer in Jesus Christ. He's 86 years old now. But during his coaching years, he was big on these three rules for his team and expected them to follow them. So let's do the next slide. And hopefully it'll work. Yes. So his rules for his team is number one, do what's right and be honest. Number two, do the very best that you can do. Don't settle on mediocrity if you are capable of doing better. And three, treat others like you want to be treated. These are simple but powerful rules, and they apply to everyday life. Coaches, Coach Holtz's team played as one. They were focused he coached for 11 seasons, and during that time, Notre Dame won 100 games. That's pretty impressive. So, what's important now? Let's go to slide three. Second Chronicles 5, 11 through 14. And it came to pass, when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present and sanctified themselves, without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites, who were the singers, and all, the, all those of Asaph, Heman, and Judathon, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed, stringed instruments, and harps. And with them, 120 priests, sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. 
the point here is that these people, the priests who were playing the trumpets, all 120 of them, who sanctified themselves, set apart, holy, and the singers were as one. They weren't competing against each other. They weren't focused on who could play the loudest, who could play the best, who could sing the best and the loudest, who could harmonize the best. But they were totally focused on what was important. And that was taking the focus off them and putting it solely on the Lord. And when the Lord saw their hearts and minds were totally focused on him, being one together, praising the Lord that he filled the temple with his glory because they were focusing on what was important now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. So say this with me. For he is good... For his mercy endures forever. Again, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Again, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Woo, hallelujah. Okay, next slide. We're going to look at a very familiar scripture again. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Are we his people? Yes. Are we called by his name? Yes. It's so important to focus on what's important now to humble ourselves, to pray and seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways. When we turn, that means that we are headed in the other direction. We cannot run away from God and run toward God. It doesn't work that way. Turning to God means turning away from wicked ways meaning we can't go in both directions at the same time at once. We need to remain focused to do what's right, to do the very best that we can do in everything and treat others like we want to be treated. When we do these things, God honors. He will and he does hear us. He will answer Amen. Hallelujah. Slide five, please. Psalm 19 and 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes. Psalm 27 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So I ask you and me again, what's important now? Earlier, Crystal gave an analogy about the shadow, about us being in God's shadow, and how we became as one. When we... when. Susan entered into the shadow that was symbolizing God's shadow. She and Crystal became as one. And Mary ministered to a song, Keep Me in the Moment, by Jeremy Camp. A portion of the chorus that says, singing, Oh Lord, keep me in the moment. Help me live with my eyes wide open, because I don't want to miss what you have for me. Slide six, please. Matthew six thirty three through 34 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, 
For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. God will provide. Does he expect us to do our part? Yes, I believe that he does. I believe that he expects us to do the very best that we can do with, with what our skills and abilities are. And always, always putting God first, praying and reading his word. And then there's another side to things. We all need to take time, make time to spend with our families, our friends, making memories, making time for ourselves to regroup, stepping back if necessary, if needed, and just be in the moment. That's so important. Life is busy, so we all need to take time to be refreshed. Yes. In Ephesians chapters 1 and 2, it outlines eight things of who we are as the children of God. It's no mistake that there are eight, as the number eight means victory, prosperity, and overcoming. Wow. Wow. I encourage you to take time to read these chapters in your quiet time with the Lord. So let's take a look. Number one, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Two, we are chosen because God loves us with an everlasting love. Number three, we are adopted as God's beloved children into his family. Four, we are redeemed because God has given great plans for our lives. Five, we are forgiven and made new in Christ Jesus. Six, we are loved unconditionally by our God who daily pursues us. Seven, we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And eight, we are God's masterpiece created for his purpose. And then, so these eight statements that are outlined in God's word to describe who we are in the Lord, do they not represent victory, prosperity, and overcoming? Yes, they do. We as God's children are so important to him. He loves us so much. So let's, let's take a look again what's important now. Slide 8, please. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Romans 12, 4, 5, 4 through 5 says, For as we have many members in one body, but, our, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. And individually, members are one, are of one another. Amen? Slide 9. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider one another, one another, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So why should we assemble ourselves together like we are today? We've heard this many times. It's nothing new. Because we draw strength and encouragement from one another. We share our gifts and talents that God has given us to help one another. We become as one focused on what's important now. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ and one another. Slide 10. Philippians 3, 12 through 16 says, Not that I have already attained 
or am already perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold on me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal, the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk in the same rule. Let us be of the same mind, being as one. So this past Wednesday, Crystal spoke about being pure and how we walk in a new identity. Because Jesus, cha Jesus changed our name. We are made pure and we are free. Amen? Forget about the things that are behind us. And reach forward to those things that are ahead of us. Pressing toward the goal. Being of the same mind and focusing what's on what's important now. This was short and I sincerely hope that you got something out of it. I know it blessed me when I was putting it together. What's important now? So we need to ask ourselves, just as Lou Holtz's team asked themselves, what's important now? So keep that in mind and say it with me. My slide, if it'll appear. Nope, it doesn't. What's important now? Let's say it together. What's important now? Amen. God bless you. Brother Paul.